Cash 3 drawing. That'll do it for News 2 at 5. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you back here at 6. Good night. On World News Tonight, John Kerry concedes. Today, I hope that we can begin the healing. President Bush says that now he needs the support of all Americans. I'm proud to lead such an amazing country, and I'm proud to lead it forward. So can the president have what he wants? And what about Iraq? Tonight, we'll take a closer look. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening, everyone. That was a long night, and this morning when Senator Kerry stood up in Boston and said there was no way he could win the electoral votes he needed, he was, as they say, gracious in defeat. America is in need of unity and longing for a larger measure of compassion. I hope President Bush will advance those values in the coming years. I pledge to do my part to try to bridge the partisan divide. I know this is a difficult time for my supporters, but I ask them, all of you, to join me in doing that. President Bush was gracious in victory. So today I want to speak to every person who voted for my opponent. To make this nation stronger and better, I will need your support, and I will work to earn it. I will do all I can do to deserve your trust. A new term is a new opportunity to reach out to the whole nation. Five million people voted to, I beg your pardon, 59 million people voted to re-elect the president, 55 million voted for Senator Kerry, a convincing win in the popular vote for the president in a country still badly divided in many ways. ABC's Terry Moran has covered the president for the entire first term. Terry? Thanks, Peter. And it, all day here, I can tell you, there's been a deep sense of the affirmation that comes with this kind of victory, that clear majority in the popular vote, strong presidential coattails in the congressional races. There's also been a sense of relief. In Washington today, they were playing his song again. The 43rd president basked in the moment, eyes glistening with emotion, taking in the scale of a victory that Vice President Cheney described as both historic and empowering. President Bush ran forthrightly on a clear agenda for this nation's future, and the nation responded by giving him a mandate. And then, after all the stump speeches and the miles on the trail and the nail-biting hours as the vote came in, victory. We had a long night and a great night. Earlier at 11.02 this morning, the president took John Kerry's congratulatory phone call in the Oval Office. You were an admirable, worthy opponent, he told his rival aide said. You waged one tough campaign. In his remarks this afternoon, Mr. Bush was magnanimous. We had a really good phone call. He was very gracious. Senator Kerry waged a spirited campaign. And he and his supporters can be proud of their efforts. The president's own supporters and his closest aides could finally celebrate what their labors had achieved four more years. Mr. Bush went out of his way to praise his team, in particular the man who has guided his political career since it began. The architect, Karl Rove. The Bush campaign from the start was fueled by the enthusiasm of the Republican base, especially evangelical Christian voters, and today, once again, Mr. Bush used the language of faith. There's an old saying, do not pray for tasks equal to your powers. Pray for powers equal to your tasks. And then he concluded with that pledge to work with those who so bitterly opposed him. We have one country, one constitution, and one future that binds us. And when we come together and work together, there is no limit to the greatness of America. The president made that same promise to be a uniter, not a divider, after the bitter election of 2000. Perhaps this time, Peter, 
things will be different. Thank you, Terry. Terry Moran at the White House. After such a long campaign, we look to see what matters most to the voters. ABC's George Stephanopoulos is with us. We look, of course, George, to the exit polls. And this question of moral values is a surprising one to show up on exit polls. It sure did. It showed up at the top. But, Peter, it's hard to know exactly what it means, moral values, when it's stacked up against other concrete issues like jobs and taxes and health care and the war. But I do think that one of President Bush's strengths was his ability to frame issues in moral terms, right and wrong, good and evil, as Terry Moran just said, using the language of faith. There is uh, some suggestion uh, in the country today, including among Democrats, that Democrats are out of touch with the culture of much of the country. And perhaps that John Kerry, as a messenger, didn't have a good cultural fit with the rest of the country. You saw him try to make up for it. You saw the pictures of him hunting. He emphasized that he was a church-going Catholic, but that didn't make up for, it appears, the fact that he was from Massachusetts, married to a billionaire, a little bit out of touch. You and I were agreeing a little earlier that one of the things that surprised us was the economy cutting in Ohio. Bad economy. Everybody thought it would go for Mr. Kerry. Stunning numbers to me, Peter. 57% of the people in our exit poll in Ohio thought the economy was going in the wrong direction, but they broke 43 to 38 for President Bush. If you can't make the economy work for you in a state where it's gone, 200,000 manufacturing jobs are lost, where 57% of the voters think it's gone in the wrong direction, that's a fatal flaw. Many thanks, George. George Stephanopoulos. For Senator Kerry and his campaign, the last 24 hours, indeed the last two years, have constituted a pretty incredible ride. ABC's Dean Reynolds is still with them in Boston tonight. Dean? Peter, on the 699th day of his fight to win the presidency, John Kerry today officially surrendered. Earlier today, uh, I spoke to President Bush and I offered him and Laura our congratulations on their victory. Aid said that though some campaign lawyers told Kerry to challenge the results in court, by 10 o'clock this morning he decided the harsh arithmetic called for a different course of action. I would not give up this fight if there was a chance that we would prevail. But it is now clear that even when all the provisional ballots are counted, which they will be, there won't be enough outstanding votes for us to be able to win Ohio. And therefore, we cannot win this election. At noon yesterday, the feeling was so different, as Kerry suggested to ABC's Ted Koppel. I feel very calm, very confident about the effort on the ground, what we have going, and what I stand for. But as night fell over New England, euphoria gave way to anxiety when Florida tightened and slipped away. ABC News is now going to project that Florida goes to Mr. Bush. Ohio was tottering at 2 a.m. when Kerry went to bed and was falling apart when he awoke at 7. Work began on a concession. And I wish you know, know how much uh, that I could have brought this race home for you. His workers were crushed. We did our best to try to get everyone out there, but we didn't, we didn't win. It's devastating. It's devastating. The Kerry campaign built an organization unrivaled in Democratic Party history and a website that helped raise unprecedented sums of money. Together with various independent groups, is, uh... the political ads they produced, and a Democratic base angry at Bush, Kerry was fully armed to mount his challenge. And yet, an uneven performance on the stump, a vaguely patrician manner and a hesitant response to Republican ridicule all made his job a tough one. It's no small task taking on a sitting president, nor should it be, but uh, I think the results show there was no overwhelming mandate. And while history shows that it's always difficult to unseat an incumbent president, for John Kerry, who felt yesterday he was so close, History must provide very little consolation tonight. Thank you, Peter? Dean. Dean Reynolds in Boston. When we come back after the victory, we'll take a closer look at the challenges for a second Bush term. And at the end of the broadcast, nine and a half hours on a voting line, that is determination. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Brought to you by Allegra. 
Mega Mold. Let's see what seasonal allergy medicine she picks today. Pick one of those. You could be suffering in six hours. Choose any of those and you could be drowsy. Allegra 180? Lasts all day and non-drowsy? Why do I even keep those others around? Not one of these allergy medicines can give you long-lasting seasonal allergy relief without the risk of drowsiness. But Allegra 180 can. Non-drowsy Allegra works around the clock. For people 12 and over, side effects alone may include headache, cold, or backache. The L's in Allegra must stand for long-lasting. Long-lasting Allegra. The relief goes on. Scary. Yeah, and I bet they didn't have that insurance back then. What? Half uh, what? It gives your mommy money if she's sick and can't work. What does? Half uh, what? Pay attention. To what? Half uh, what? Half uh, lack. Ask about it at work. Half uh, what? Sore throat pain. It's hard to work, hard to think. No time for ordinary drops. End your sore throat emergency fast with the strongest Sepacol lozenges ever. Sepacol numbs sore throat pain fast with Menfocaine action. Menfocaine, two anesthetics for fast relief. So effective it's number one in hospitals. The pain is gone. And try new Sepacol dual action spray. Numbs pain on contact. Coats your throat for comfort. Sepacol ends your sore throat emergency. Introducing Mercury Mariner. Save yourself the hassle. Get two. It's mine. Medical news from Centrum Silver. A report in a leading medical journal recommends a multivitamin for all adults to help reduce the risk of certain chronic diseases. And the brand recommended most by doctors for those over 50, age-adjusted, Centrum Silver. There are those who use Preparation H and those who should have used Preparation H. Preparation H relieves burning and itching and adds a soothing layer of protection. Use it daily to help prevent further irritation. Shouldn't you use Preparation H? It was Vice President Cheney today, not the President, who said that Mr. Bush had a mandate to do what he wants in the next four years. Mr. Bush, standing nearby, may have said to himself, if it were only true. Mr. Bush has been a very active president in these first four years. As we know, the second four, even with a Republican majority in the Congress, may be quite different. We begin our closer look tonight with ABC's John Cochran on the domestic challenge. On the campaign trail, the president promised a bold domestic agenda. Today, he said he meant it. We'll reform our outdated tax code. We'll strengthen the Social Security for the next generation. We'll make public schools all they can be. But he may have to move quickly while he is at his most powerful. Second terms are often uh, difficult times for presidents. The beginning of a second term is really his chance to do something if he wants to use the you know, fairly decisive win that he had on Tuesday. The president will use his political capital on issues he cares the most about, making his tax cuts permanent, which he says will keep the economy moving simplifying tax returns for every taxpayer and changing social security by giving young people the chance to invest in private retirement accounts a plan that could cost two trillion dollars over ten years mister bush has not said how he would pay for all this despite his victory at the polls mister bush may have to compromise senate democrats have the power to delay any part of the bush agenda the most brutal fight could come over the supreme court Chief Justice Rehnquist's serious illness is a sharp reminder that Mr. Bush could nominate as many as three justices. Social conservatives who were so important to his re-election will demand socially conservative nominees. And that could be very important for issues like same-sex marriage, religious liberty, uh, the sanctity of life, and, and other things that motivated millions of voters this week. Finally, Mr. Bush has promised he will hold down spending and reduce the bloated budget deficit. To do that, he must be a new George Bush, one who will take on Congress. So far, he is a president who has never vetoed a spending bill. John Cochran, ABC News, Washington. And now the overseas agenda, which, however it was portrayed during the campaign, certainly includes at the top of the list the war in Iraq. Last week, Vice President Cheney called Iraq a remarkable success story. ABC's Martha Raddatz has just returned from Iraq. 
She says Mr. Bush faces more than quite a challenge. The long election night changed nothing on the ground in Iraq. While the votes were being counted, another U.S. soldier was killed by a roadside bomb. On the highway to the Baghdad airport, a suicide bomber killed an Iraqi and wounded seven others. Five more hostages were seized, including an American. President Bush must now finish the war he began. Don't expect big changes in strategy. We're not going to be making different decisions. That's very important, that sort of continuity. But it's not necessarily going to mean that one battle or another battle is fought a different way. Outside Fallujah, where U.S. Marines are planning a major assault, they watched the returns last night, many voicing support for George Bush. We all believe in unity of command, and it's my feeling that it's kind of like taking the all-star quarterback out of the big game. Fallujah has been entirely under the control of insurgents since April, when U.S. Marines were pulled back from the town. In a recent interview with ABC News, the Marine commander said he is now just waiting for the go-ahead from the Iraqi prime minister. We would be prepared to go with, side-by-side uh, side with the Iraqi security forces. We will support them in any way that uh, the prime minister wants us to support them. Yet President Bush could face a backlash if innocent civilians are killed creating even more enemies. The insurgents themselves, the, the, particularly the Iraqi insurgents, are regenerating. And that is a sobering thing for all of us. The U.S. has been battling the insurgents for more than 18 months. If they can't be defeated in Fallujah, President Bush will have a very difficult time reducing the number of U.S. troops anytime soon. Martha Raddatz, ABC News, the Pentagon. If you'd like to look at more about the administration's agenda for the next four years, go to abcnews.com. We have one other result to report tonight. Almost a month after the polls closed in Afghanistan's presidential elections, Hamid Karzai has officially been declared the winner. An Afghan United Nations panel found there were no voting irregularities that would affect the outcome, and Mr. Karzai wins with 55% of the vote. So the Democrats took a beating. There's a lot of soul searching going on today. Surviving cancer is still the biggest victory of my life. And I did it with the help of three Bristol-Myers Squibb medicines. Today, Bristol-Myers Squibb researchers are fighting our most serious diseases. Their life-saving medicines have turned many cancer patients into cancer survivors. Medicines for AIDS, heart disease, and serious mental illness reflect their commitment to research and to extending and enhancing human life. I'm living proof of that. Hope, triumph, and the miracle of medicine. Bristol-Myers Squibb Company. Let's talk about better. When someone says something's better, it's usually just their opinion. So if you suffer from acid reflux disease, frequent heartburn, and I told you prescription Nexium heals acid-related damage in the esophagus better, you'd want proof. And now, your doctor has that proof. Recent medical studies prove Nexium heals that damage better than the other leading prescription medicine. No wonder they call Nexium the healing purple pill. So call your doctor today and ask if Nexium is right for you. Because if left untreated, the damage could get worse. Other serious stomach conditions may still exist. The most common side effects of Nexium are headache, diarrhea, and abdominal pain. Hey, with Nexium, you don't just feel better. You are better. And better is better. If you're concerned about catching a cold or the flu this season, here's an idea. Move to a deserted island and avoid other people for six months. Or just drink a glass of Florida orange juice every day. Give your immune system more of the vitamins and minerals it needs. Florida orange juice. Healthy. Pure and simple. Oh, wrap those arms around me. Oh, yes. Yes, I want to feel your warmth. Dreaming about a new coat? Don't even dream about paying department store prices. Burlington Coat Factory's pre-winter savings event has all top quality designer label coats, jackets, and leathers, all up to 60% off department store prices. She looks so peaceful when she's shopping. Burlington Coat Factory. Love coats, love labels, you'll love our prices. <laughs> Women. They want to be strong and sweet forever. And they want to enjoy their calcium. One delicious Viactive Soft Calcium Chew twice a day has the calcium women need. Viactive. It's what women want. Now we know. 
Senator Kerry loses. President Bush wins. But what don't you know about the moves being made in Washington to help heal a bitterly divided nation? And can they work? Tomorrow, don't miss World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Well, as you've heard many times, it was a devastating night for the Democrats. Not only did they lose the presidency, they lost seats in both houses of the Congress. This is the makeup in the House as of tonight. 231 Republicans, 201 Democrats, one Independent. Republicans added two seats to their majority. And two races in Louisiana will only be decided on December the 4th when there is a runoff. In the Senate, Republicans picked up four seats, most notably in South Dakota, where the Democratic minority leader Tom Daschle suffered a stinging defeat. This is how the Senate looks as of tonight. 55 Republicans, 44 Democrats, and one Independent. So inside the Democratic Party leadership, in fact, across the party, the self-examination has begun. ABC's Linda Douglas is on Capitol Hill. This election has shaken the Democratic Party to its core. Its presidential candidate and its most powerful leader in Congress were defeated. This is a difficult morning, and I don't want anybody in this room to feel angry or sad. Democrats were beaten by Republicans in every contested Senate seat in the South. Some say their party no longer connects with voters in many parts of the country. We have written off whole areas of the country, both geographically and culturally. In the broad middle of the country, where many voters own guns and oppose abortion and gay marriage, Republicans did connect, talking about values. The image of the Democrats does not match the middle of the country. There was a lot of soul-searching among Democrats today. They wonder, should they fight President Bush even harder or compromise? In Congress, the Democrats' size and power have shrunk dramatically. They've lost a great deal of power and momentum. They are leaderless. They have fewer members uh, at any time since 1928. Uh, they're in trouble. Some Democrats who've seen their colleagues defeated will feel pressure to go along with the Republicans. Well, you have a real Republican majority, and I think you do have a mandate. And for the moment, Democrats have few leaders. Daschle, a national figure, will likely be replaced by a soft-spoken, little-known senator from Nevada. As John Kerry leaves the scene, Democratic wise men are huddling to figure out how to broaden the party's appeal. It will not be easy. Linda Douglas, ABC News, Capitol Hill. The stock market reacted favorably to the president's victory. The Dow Jones Industrial Average closed more than 100 point ups at 10,137. The Nasdaq was up 19 points. The election, as you know, was not only about competing candidates. Voters in 11 states overwhelmingly approved constitutional amendments banning same-sex marriage. In California, voters approved spending $3 billion on stem cell research. In Alaska, a proposal allowing adults to use and sell marijuana was defeated. In Arizona, voters approved a measure denying government services, including health care to illegal immigrants. When we come back, they waited and they waited and they waited. That restaurant was great. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. Is that where you take all your first dates? Maybe. Me. Women drivers. Introducing the highly maneuverable Mercury Mariner. Got gas? Pressure? Bloating? Tums doesn't treat gas, neither does Pepto Bismol. To treat gas, use Gas X for fast, powerful relief. Popcorn? Ooh. Gas X beats the bloat, and acids don't. What makes CVS Pharmacy the leading drugstore in America? Well, with the Extra Care Card, our customers got back over $1 billion in savings and rewards last year. CVS Pharmacy. Expect something extra. Introducing the Ultimate Buttery Spread. New Smart Balance Omega Plus. With natural plant sterols and omega-3 from the sea. To help promote healthy cholesterol and triglyceride levels. 
Omega Plus contains no hydrogenated oil and no trans fatty acids with the right balance of fats for smart eating. Plus a delicious buttery taste. Try the ultimate buttery spread. New Smart Balance Omega Plus. There is no safe cigarette. Light and ultralight cigarettes are no exception. To reduce the health effects of smoking, the best thing to do is to quit. At philipmorrisusa.com, you can find this and other information on the serious health effects of smoking, along with links to sites that can help smokers quit. For more, call or visit philipmorrisusa.com. I knew women lose bone mass, but who knew it could start as early as our 30s? I'm already 34, so I switched to One-A-Day Women's. One-A-Day Women's is a complete multivitamin with more than twice the calcium of Centrum. I need to stay strong. One-A-Day Women's. You want flat and unobstructed, a little consistency? Try bowling. Tiger, VJ, and Ernie head the field as the top 30 in the game go at it. The Tour Championship, this weekend on ABC. Tonight, a Nightline exclusive event, Ted Koppel with John Kerry. Inside the dramatic last 36 hours of the Kerry campaign. At 4 p.m., they thought he had it. By 4 a.m., they knew he lost it. The final hours to the bitter end on Nightline tonight. Five this evening, a little genuine inspiration. Throughout this entire political year, the political campaigns have been eager to increase the participation of younger people. Nothing new about that. And sometimes when they don't turn out to vote, commentators are inclined to say, told you so, the vote is wasted on the young. But with that in mind, we pay one more visit to Gambier, Ohio, in the battleground of Knox County. Kenyon College in Gambier, Ohio, one o'clock in the morning. How long have you uh, been alive? Nine hours. Nine and a half. Since Knox County wasn't prepared for this. They'd only ordered two voting machines for Gambier. So who are all these people? And most of them look pretty young, don't they? Like everyone's active. So, I mean, it's probably like around 90% of students turn out. How long are you willing to wait? As long as I have They waited. And waited. One of the two machines was out of commission for a while, so they waited some more. Oh, some of them waited nine hours and 45 minutes. It shouldn't have taken this long, but I'm willing to, I was willing to wait. I feel that strongly about adding my two cents. The well, most impressive thing for me was how the volunteers came out uh, for ever since we've been here at 2 o'clock. They were bringing pizza, food, encouraging words, um, anything you wanted, sharing umbrellas. Oh, yes, it rained, too. I think that I didn't understand uh, the importance of my single vote. In the future, I will, I will never take it for granted. By the time they were finished, these young people, that is, there was no one else voting. Two more voters. In the entire state. That is our report on World News Tonight. Later this evening, a special nightline. Ted Koppel has been behind the scenes with the Kerry campaign in the last 24, 36 hours. I'm Peter Jennings. I hope to we'll see you again tomorrow. Good night. This has been a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source. TV Guide is calling ABC's Lost TV's most addictive new drama. You don't know me! Take one look and you'll see why. Where is he? Is he alive? An all new Lost. Tonight, 8, 7 central only on ABC. News 2 at 6 starts now. America has spoken. And I'm humbled by the trust and the confidence of my fellow citizens. With that trust comes a duty to serve all Americans. And I will do my best to fulfill that duty every day as your president. You have taught me and you've tested me and you've lifted me up.
and you've made me stronger. I did my best to express my vision and my hopes for America. We worked hard and we fought hard and I wish that things had turned out a little differently. Victory tonight for George W. Bush. His challenger, John Kerry, falls short. Both men tonight call for unity among a nation that is strongly divided. Good evening, I'm Ann Holt. And I'm Bob Mueller. This now an updated electoral map. We're going to show you that while some provisional ballots still must be counted in Ohio, there are not enough outstanding for Senator Kerry to win the state. The win in Ohio puts Mr. Bush at 274 electoral college votes, enough to win re-election. Senator Kerry and his running mate, Senator John Edwards, accepted defeat graciously and dignified. They were all smiles as they took the stage in Boston, but as Senator Kerry